And Petra, we will uh, travel to Chatterdale. Yeah, now we will be getting a little bit more serious, not just <laughs> listening serious? to music, but now we are going to a serious topic. I don't want to be in a serious topic. But serious, a serious topic can be fun as well. Okay, well, you yeah. have to talk a bit more in the microphone then. Okay, so I will do that. So I'm now uh, 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 traveling into Chatterdale. Oh, Chris. So who is, who is teaching English here? Okay, so there are a few. Yeah. Uh, I can tell about Chatterdale. Chatterdale is the oldest village, spiritual village. I have uh, built this about 10 years ago. And uh, at that time, I won two prizes for it uh, from the European language label, whatever. And uh, we went for a nice dinner, and then the money was gone. Spent. Spent. <laughs> But uh, this, uh, and, uh, um, well, they, they, at that time they were uh, really surprised what already could be done in a virtual world. Uh, and we built this actually because we wanted to, uh, and normally in the Netherlands we have this system from, uh, uh, that a whole classroom is rebuilt like a, uh, or a whole school is rebuilt as a um, village, a language village. And then they have to walk around in the whole school, and then this classroom is the bakery, and that classroom is the police station, and this classroom is, uh, is in a hotel, and then you have to walk, go into the hotel, and then you have to book a room. And that's how I started uh, building Chatterdale, to replace the whole difficult system of, of, of uh, changing the whole complete school into a virtu virtual system that you could do on your computer. Mm -hmm. This was the beginning of uh, education in the virtual world. So when I go outside, oh, nice. oh, you still had to go through the border there. Yes, there is still a border, ah, and, and yeah, it's there will be soon. It's going to be active again <laughs> because uh, the Brexit. So I left the border here. <laughs> eh? And uh, do you have anything to declare? Yes, I have no. So we can go outside, and uh, and opposite the uh, the is, we have a hotel, and we have many more different uh, uh, houses um, and well as you can see a, a hotel a bakery a post office all, all things that you encounter when you are in a real english city or village or town town yes okay but over to you petra yeah okay so now we go to um, a, a learning path on um, waste and waste avoidance. We saw that already uh, in a smaller thing as a learning station in, uh, in Parolet, so for, in, for, for French. Um, and we also have something here for English. So maybe you can go, yeah, you I'm have to turn right yes, now. Yes, yes, I'm just showing okay, the railway yeah, station. Yeah, you can do that. I'm just sightseeing. There is even a pub here, but I don't, don't like if... Yeah, but, if but there's no time for, for a beer right no? now, so you better But it's move open, on. it says yeah, it's yeah, open. Yeah, 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 oh. I know. <laughs> oh, my God. She is very... Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I, I, saw, I, I told you, it's a serious uh, topic okay. now. So <laughs> I will run you should, then. You, should, you can have the beer afterwards. Now, fish and chips, look. Yeah, great. Co uh, Costa coffee, well, that's only in, in England, Costa coffee. No? Yeah. You have all... I think I saw it in uh, Taiwan. Taiwan? Yes. Okay, well, I don't have a Taiwan island. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we're almost there. This is the, the first thing I built was this beautiful church, of course. And, uh, and here we come at the learning path that you were just talking about. Yeah. There it is. So here you have a learning path that is not like just distributed in the world, but it's all in one place. And so students walk together from one board to the next. And now we hope that the content will appear, because otherwise that would be really a pity. Yes. It's there. OK. So, so this, this part starts with a little pre-task, so where they uh, discuss what happens to our waste. So, so what, what happens? So they, they just start thinking about, the students start thinking about this, this issue, and then they watch uh, a video. And this is a trailer of the documentary Trashed with Jeremy Irons, and they just watch this video. We, we don't play the whole thing, but maybe we just play a little bit. From up here, our planet looks perfect. It's only when we look more closely that we start to see some of the results of our consumption. Okay. 
You see, it's a serious topic. It's scary. And, yeah. And, but it also shows that you can just integrate videos, any video from YouTube, and you just can link it to this, to this environment through uh, this authoring tool that I mentioned earlier. And this is really very straightforward and very easy. And now here we have four boards which are quiz boards. And, and here these are four questions with multiple choice questions about the video. So the students now go from one to the next, they discuss the question, think of a possible answer, what they think is correct, and then they decide which letter to click, and then they see whether they got it right or not. If they didn't get it right, they could go back to the video, or they could discuss it again, or could go back to the video, watch it again, so and make sure that they really understood everything. Ah. And you're not very good. I think you didn't even read the question, did you? No, but I didn't, re I didn't watch the video also. Oh, you didn't watch the video. But it has been there for some time already. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I just avoid the right answer. <laughs> yeah, that's also a possibility. Okay, um, I'll press C. Yeah. There uh, you go. No. Go to the next board. Go to the next board. So you go from one to the next. We won't, don't, don't want to do that now. We just go to the next board. And then, after they have watched this video and discussed the questions, they uh, talk about their own behavior, their own attitudes towards how they're in their country, uh, waste separation or, or, or uh, recycling is treated, how they do it, maybe also in their family. Or, uh, so they talk about this issue to get the thing to, well, to, for, to authenticate the topic, actually. And, um, and afterwards, they, uh, after having talked about recycling and, and, and uh, waste um, separation, uh, there is an, a last, a final board, uh, where, which addresses the issue that uh, waste uh, s recycling is not really the only solution, because only wow. a very small part of uh, um, waste is actually recycled, and it also has uh, serious problems. And so they are, uh, have to talk about possibilities of waste avoidance. And then the task is that to come up with like five ideas of how to avoid waste. And then they are asked to sit down at the table and think about these issues and write things down. So they would again do that either in a printed out uh, worksheet or using Google Docs and creating something together. And we also talked about the possibility of then going back into class and taking the t uh, this talking, continuing to talk about this topic or to work on outside the work, virtual world. And for instance, the task could be to create a poster on this issue of possibilities of waste avoidance, maybe even with the idea of then printing the poster, putting it in their different schools, or put, uh, placing it online, and things like that. So really to make it more meaningful and useful and have a real result. So these are the possibilities. I mean, that it's just a suggestion. It's just a possibility only to show you how you could integrate this and, and, and make things happen. Yeah. So maybe again, if you like, if you like this, you could again talk to each other. Uh, and then we can also share a few questions here for everybody. Is that okay with you? Would you like to do that? Okay, so we'll just give you like a few minutes and then... I will walk around in uh, par uh, Chatterhill then. Yeah, okay. So, it's over to you. Uh, St. Nicholas Church.
So I hope you had a fantastic, fruitful discussion. And maybe there are also questions online. Oh, okay. So um, who uh, wants to join, uh, uh, share his uh, idea or discussion? Any? That's good. <laughs> uh, yes, there. Okay. Okay. Um, so we were discussing about if um, there must be uh, kind of. Um, do we have to make a um, registration uh, so that we can have like groups of students, or this is more like uh, 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 auto uh, autonomous, autonomous automatic, yes, no. or 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 autonomous? I mean, if the students uh, are going to be free to make this practice, uh, how can we? have the control for which student is going, which student is not practicing, which student, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so, so as teachers, how can we have that control okay. if we want our students to be practicing this? Yeah, so one option would be that you give them a worksheet that they have to fill in and bring back to the classroom and so that you then follow this up in the classroom. So this would be one option that they also, yeah, and, and, and we even for the, the, the learning stations and learning paths that we have there, we already created a worksheet, which is, again, just a suggestion. And you could change that, and you could tell students other things that they have to, to note down. But this is one, one possibility. You could, of course, also join them, but if they are working in small groups, you wouldn't have the time to, to, to go there each time. But I, I think to, yeah, it's important also to leave them the space to interact there as they, well, in the way they, 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 they like and, and, and so that they feel comfortable in this environment and then they just have to bring a result back. Also with this task, with the uh, uh, trashed, yeah, where they don't have to come up with ideas. They have to bring their ideas back and also maybe answer the questions on the worksheet. So this, this will be then, uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so I, I think in this connection, it's also very important to see this in the context of, of what is called blended learning. Hmm. That is where we, where, we, um, where we have our classroom activities, and this in a way is the main thing, right? And now the question comes up, is it possible to um, uh, enable our students to engage in some activities uh, for which we feel they are important, but we can't do it in the classroom like that? And that is where these things uh, then come in. So in particular with uh, uh, providing opportunities for communication written, if you take the chat or spoken communication, uh, with people in other countries. And, uh, and as Petra just said, I mean, this is also part of this idea of blended learning, or some people um, uh, talk about flipped classrooms, or where you do things outside the classroom and then bring things back into the classroom. So they, they do something in this environment, they discuss certain things in front of these boards with their partner, and then they have the task, and you gave them the task, to bring things back. That is, a summary, or give a report in class, or, or something like that. Or uh, various of your students are engaged in, in various um, uh, pairs and groups with students in other countries, and then they come back, and in class, you have a discussion with them, right? And, and then these activities in class, these follow-up activities, they form then, um, uh, of course, a better basis for assessment. On the other hand, what we mentioned before, um, during these online activities, uh, well, you can build in 
reflective uh, activities and, uh, and have self-reflection and peer reflection and these things, which can be very, very extremely valuable for um, successful learning. So I, I think we, uh, with these things, we, we have to think pedagogically beyond what we can do in the classroom. This is not uh, a replication of the classroom. This is sort of adding things to what we want to do uh, in the classroom. So, okay. Est-ce que je peux juste... Uh, je vais juste ah, ou oui. Ou, ou, oui. Pipi, euh, là, vous parlez aussi d'une approche euh, qui peut être très, très importante de savoir si les activités ont été faites. Mais on est beaucoup plus aussi sur le qualitatif. De toute manière, je pense qu'au bout de certains temps, vous allez voir qu'ils seront beaucoup plus à l'aise à l'oral. Euh, parce que donc ils vont travailler en langue étrangère et c'est sur ça se voit sur le moyen et le long terme mais c'est important effectivement de savoir si le travail est fait en classe euh, est fait à l'extérieur de la classe mais toujours je pense que les activités sont des invitations pour aller plus loin en classe pour faire un retour en classe et c'est comme ça que vous voyez si le travail a été fait effectivement Non, mais simplement ajouter qu'en effet, ce que disait Courte, c'est qu'il faut aussi envisager l'enseignement comme des enseignements hybrides, c'est-à-dire une partie en classe et une partie en dehors de la classe, et que ça se combine finalement pour des tâches signifiantes et pour aider l'apprentissage des langues. Merci. Euh, je voulais juste poser une question, puisque comme on parle d'enseignement de, et d'apprentissage hybride, est-ce que dans votre expérience, je parle à l'équipe Técola, dans votre expérience, euh, vous n'avez pas une confusion entre le monde réel et le monde virtuel Pourquoi je pose cette question Puisque tout à l'heure, on a parlé des valences, et donc on l'a présenté comme une île. Et donc, je ne sais pas si on a une partie de contextualisation pour expliquer aux apprenants que nous sommes dans un monde virtuel et que donc Valence n'est pas une île, mais peut-être une ville au bord de la mer. Ça, c'est juste un exemple. Je ne sais pas si on a besoin ou pas dans cette approche de faire une petite contextualisation de ce genre de, de détails, d'aspects. Oh. Um, I was wondering if, for example, for, for the Cola, Tecola team, if um, it is uh, necessary to separate the virtual world from the real world, because I, I just gave the example of Valence, which you presented as a city, uh, as an island, and which is a city. So I don't know if students get confused with this information. So if they are able to understand that this is virtual and not real. Uh, my question was, uh, I wanted to know if we need to uh, contextualize uh, from a cultural point of view this type of exercise? Hmm. That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> well, anybody wants to answer this? <laughs> well, we don't, I don't want, I don't build these islands to be as the real world and they don't look as the real world, and they don't even look like the best games as there are, so they, they really know they are in a virtual world. And uh, the only thing we are trying to do is to, to have them commu communicate with each other about topics, like topics they will, will encounter in the real world. So that's the only connection we have with the real world, is that they talk about topics of the real world in an environment that looks a bit like the real world, but it's not really the real world. That's, that's what I, our intention is. Yeah, it's my, also you have certain places. You have a pub in uh, Chatterdale, but you have a cafe in, uh, or bistro in uh, France, in, in, in Parolet. So it's, yeah, you have some typical items there as representative items. Uh, mais de toute, ma rien, de toute ma façon, je pense qu'il n'y a rien n'empêche qu'il qu y ait une, mise, une petite discussion en classe pour quelque chose. Voilà, donc vous pouvez faire une visionner ensemble en classe et voir, donc bah, expliquer bah, voilà, ce qui est le réel, le réel virtuel, etc. Échanger avec les élèves à ce niveau-là. Je pense que le meilleur moyen, c'est éventuellement d'avoir des de, de, de petits moments réflexifs aussi en classe. Okay. Uh, sorry, I was just wondering, 
from a technical point of view, is it possible to, uh, if you've got two students, to have them on different islands, but, be, but speaking through the headset? No. 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 Oh, sorry. So, no, so they always have... They have to be close to each other. Yeah. So, because yes. well, one of my problems with these tasks is that they've, so they've both seen the video, and then they're communicating about the video that they've both seen, so there's no information gap there, there's no real reason for them to communicate, whereas if you have them on different islands, yeah. with different information in front of them, with one of them has a map and they, and they have to guide the other one, or yeah. in the treasure hunt, for example, yeah. it seems to be a lot more authentic, <laughs> to use a certain same uh, term. Well, that's a good question, because technically, it, it, is, it, is, it is a technical question. Technically, it should be possible, it could be possible to have two students talk to each other in a, on a private channel in different, uh, different locations, so yeah. on different islands also. So, but I actually never tried that because that's never, not, not what happened in the Take Color project. But mm -hmm. it's, technically it's possible that I can have a private chat with somebody else on another island. Okay. So that's also a way to uh, gather uh, to, to have communication. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Okay. But you can Thank also, you. of course, give them different routes in the in in the environment, so that some two students maybe go just to three boards, to uh, to other students go to different boards, and then they have to communicate and collect their information yeah, and exchange afterwards. their information. Yeah. So the, it's there are all these possibilities because this is flexible. It's not just there and it is mm -hmm. like it is, but. The boards can be put there, the content can be put there, so there are quite a few options also to, to do things differently. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, may, may I just uh, quickly come back to the contextualization question of this issue is, is kind of interesting and it, I would say, ties in with what we also know as situated learning, right? <laughs> situated learning, learning outside the classroom and then, of course, what we do in real life, we take people outside the classroom, maybe to a farm or whatever, and then we talk about ecolog ecological issues and these things, and we have real cows and we have fields, and so this is situated learning. Um, here in this virtual uh, world environment, well, we can have kind of a little bit of this. Uh, I mean, in principle, it would be possible to create wonderful sort of photorealistic environments, uh, but mm, 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 this would be extremely expensive and it would be in immensely time expensive to do all this. So the aim, as Nick uh, said, is not to, to have something photorealistic, one-to-one, -one, real world in our virtual world, but rather uh, our virtual world sort of alluding to uh, some aspects of the real world which might be interesting for us. And that is, of course, in the foreign language context, are sort of certain cities, towns from the other country with sort of typical or stereotypical um, uh, uh, characteristics and these things. And um, in order to make it more interesting for learning, because this is still then well, not very rich for, uh, for having learning activities, we have these boards which we place into these environments and on these boards we or you as teachers then again are free regarding the content, what you want to do. So you have this illusion of, of, of being in this foreign language culture and within uh, this environment, you have these boards where you can have very precise, I mean, topics that are immediately relevant, uh, like waste, uh, for instance, or other topics that fit in with your curriculum. And so we try to, to, to bring these things together. And uh, the, for me, this is all individual. Also, we have all our preferences. For me, the important thing is that in these environments, it is possible to meet up with other speakers from other countries and then to talk. And this is, and to communicate and interact, do things together in front of these boards or sitting 
um, at uh, Amelie's Café. I, I did these things with my students, sort of engaging in English as a lingua franca conversations, and it was such a big difference compared to a video uh, uh, a conference, sitting there, chez Amelie, on these chairs around this table, a group of three, four, five students, and then they, they discussed a certain topic. And these students were from different countries. So, so it, it works like this. Yeah, so it's... Focus is on communication, interaction, intercultural encounters. Bon, je vais simplement un petit peu rebondir sur ce que vient de dire Courte par rapport à la contextualisation. Je pense que le, le euh, bon, c'est que là c'est un monde virtuel, donc c'est du virtuel, c'est quelque part décontextualisé, mais c'est pas important. Parce que là, là où c'est contextualisé, c'est le rapport qui va se construire avec les apprenants de cultures différentes et de langues différentes. Voilà. Et c'est à partir de là qu'il se fait la contextualisation. C'est dans les tâches où ils vont discuter de façon authentique sur des, des choses qu'on leur demande de, de faire et de réfléchir. Donc aussi avec les, le, le, les journaux d'expérience qui vont accompagner ce travail de réflexion dans l'apprentissage d'une langue. Et là, on est complètement dans une contextualisation fine des relations qui se construisent entre apprenants. D'autres questions J'ai peut-être pris le... Vous avez une question um, I, I want to know how, to what extent this is still like prototypical. Are you, asking, are you asking people to sign up to help develop it or to actually start using it with whole classes? Or it's, I'm still not quite, it's not quite clear to me at what stage the, the project is at and what kind of um, participation a person can have. So is it more kind of contributing to your research and development, or is it just using it, or both? Donc je, je demande si euh, la participation qu'on nous demande, c'est de participer à un projet de recherche, développer cet outil, ou euh, simplement l'utiliser en classe, euh, à quel stade euh, est arrivé ce projet Oui, yeah, so we are actually using this with Class, classes, so, so you can participate with your students. And of course, we are also interested in doing research, in doing, seeing what's happening, how it's working. Uh, so it's a combination. But mainly, it's now for engaging teachers and the students to use this. And that is also why we, or we, we, we always mention that and, 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 and emphasize this, that you can create your own content. Yeah, so it's very open. So in this, to this extent, you can do your own things. You can contribute, but that is only because if you need that for your students. And it's also yeah. to show what is possible already and to get in, uh, some feedback from you on what teachers really would like in this environment. So because in future, this will be, there will be this is just a start and it will grow, it will be, uh, there, there are so many options that can be done, uh, so, and, and, and I, I really hope that this is just the start of something that can grow into a, maybe a big community of teachers that, that use this. This is not something that we do in research and then at the end throw away, no. Okay. Yeah. Another microphone, yes? Yeah, 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 and maybe providing an answer to your question. Uh, uh, I talked about the limitations we have in a normal uh, classroom setting, right? So what we are trying to do is to enrich uh, learning processes, okay? Make the whole process more rich, more effective, more meaningful than just having a book and say, uh, okay, now you have to practice with uh, both of you and you have to carry out that and they are working on groups and then the teacher is going back to another place and you, are n you don't know what they are doing. Probably they will be switching to another language because it is not meaningful for them. Okay, the teachers tell us to, that, to, do, to do it and we do it for the teacher or because we are going to get a mark eh, for this subject. But we could do more 
Yeah, so innovation, uh, doing uh, language uh, teaching processes more rich, more meaningful, and more effective. That's our target. And of course, we need, we need data. We need to analyze what's happening there in order to be able to say to policymakers, to uh, teacher training educations, to, eh, that telecollaboration should be a part of our curricula. Yeah, so I think that that could be our yeah, main objective in the long run. Yeah, to prove that it is, of course, that it is effective, that it is meaningful, uh, to provide ways, pedagogical ways, about how we can do that, how we can integrate it in a successful way. Uh, and then uh, our ambition is indeed, uh, we see over a couple of years or maybe 10 years, or uh, that telecollaboration will be a part of education, of language education. Yeah. Another question over there. Yeah, sorry. Does it keep any, any student's record or records? Pardon? Like how uh, each student is going on through the different islands and things like that? I did not, under could you, I did not understand the Does question. Does it keep any yes. student's record or records? Like how student is uh, developing uh, the different scenes going through. You mean with it, you, you could record this, but this would have been a screen capturing because there is no inbuilt possibility ah, yeah, of yeah. recording. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? So you will not see what they have done yeah. unless you are online at the same time and follow them and screen capture what is, what is there. That is different in the uh, video uh, environment that we are using, Big Blue Button, their students can be recorded, so you have a recording, but not in the virtual world. Yeah. Um, however, talking about records, um, here, talking about records, if you are using the chat tool at the bottom, you can have all the transcript afterwards. So we have transcripts of interaction that has happened exactly that. So teachers can go back and see what the students wrote there, what were the things that the students did really well, not only the things that were not that um, well done. And that's really, really useful, the chat uh, transcript for, for us language teachers. So that is one. Yeah, record and, you yeah. can have. And there is also an another, another option that your students will be working in groups and you, they could also have different roles. So one student could just be responsible for recording the meeting. Yeah? So one student would be on his or her computer and screen capturing the interaction. So this would also be a possibility. Or maybe if they do the, something they could also do is a role play and then they video record that, they screen capture that, and then they show later in the classroom, they show, show the different videos and they show their role plays and interactions. So that is another option. Okay, mm -hmm. well let's, uh, I, am, uh, I landed with my avatar here at a, a game. A game? Yes. Uh -huh. You want to play again, I see. Snakes and ladders, what is it? Snakes and ladders. In German, it's Schlangen und Leitern. Really? Yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> we are in Chatterdale. We are in Chatterdale. Ah, uh, playing in small you teams. Do, do you know this game, Snakes and Ladders? Yes. Yeah, I think most, most people do, do it. What is it in, in, in French? Jeu de l'échelle. Ah, oui. Oui. And, and we also have it in Spanish. We have it in all the, the islands. We have this as an icebreaker game. Yes. yes, you probably have seen it in Valencia next to the beach. It was just there with the instructions in Spanish and it's um, Serpientes y Escaleras. But we also have it with all the questions that you're going to see now in Spanish. Already. So, so yeah, what is, what is happening here is that students meet here at the start and then they have to click on the dice Oh, five. oh, oops, five. Five, and then they walk, one, two, three, five. And then on each... Uh, 
Oh, then they have to click on what is it? It's a, it's a, a ball. kind of ball. They have to click on it, and then a question appears. But I, here it says, "Great, you can go up to the letter number seven. Oh. So I go up to the letter and so go if, to number seven. Okay. I click again. Which food didn't you like when you were a child? Hmm? Well, which food didn't you like when you were a child? I liked everything. Really? Really, I still do. Oh. Yeah, I le I eat less meat, but uh, I still like. Almost everything. I don't like oysters, though. Okay. Yeah. You can put sugar on it. And, and, and that is, of course, difficult to say when you are in France, but no, I don't. I, I try them each time I'm, I'm in, in France, but... And escargot? Uh, well, yes, sometimes. It's not my favorite food. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so this is what should happen when you are on Snakes and Ladders. You start a discussion with the persons that you are on. You see my avatar is, is on, the, as, uh, on the field there. And where's the other avatar? The other Christy avatar, is still Christy. At the, still, still at, the, at number one. And now she can, she can click on the, on the dice. There you go. Da, 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 da. The dice is rolling. And then she rolls four. OK. So she goes to four. And she clicks on the, the four ball. What do you really like at school, Christy? What do you really like at school? Literature, and literature uh, philosophy, uh, music, and I hate, I hate it, sports. <laughs> oh, really? G yeah, yeah. G gymnastics, hmm. you know, I hated it. So, uh, okay. Yeah. Well, in, and, and in and languages, yeah, I, li I really liked all, uh, all languages. Uh, we had English at school, and I was very much interested uh, oh. in uh, Francais. Alors j'ai appris le français, et pas, pas à, à, à l'école, mais, mais <rire> non, 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 non. Et on n'avait pas de télécollaboration. Et à ce temps-là, c'était tout, c'était grammaire, et lire beaucoup et de textes, traduction, et beaucoup de civilisation pour le français. Et, okay. Oui, 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 c'est ça. And, and well, I like it at school music. And languages, for especially French, but I only had French for one year because I, I, I was not so good at school and they sent me to a technical school and there was no French there anymore. So I only had one year French. So I go every year, I go to La France, to, to Bourgogne, mm -hmm. and learn French there by going into the shops. Like, like in the Parolet, I go into the shops, I say bonjour, and I say deux croissants, et, uh, un baguette. Une baguette? Un baguette? I don't know. That's so or a pain, le pain. And then we go to the next shop. But so I do it in real. But I'm <laughs> But you you mean you can all you could also do that here? Yes. Yeah. That's if, what yeah, that was the role play part. So if I meet Martine in uh, in Paole, I can talk French with her and she can say no 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 you have to don't say le pain, say la le la pain, le La, 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 lapin, lapin, lapin is something yeah, else. That is something else. That is an animal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. So we so better now it's stop my, that. It's my, yeah, so, we, so then, yeah, you, you keep on rolling the dice, and then I get three, so I can go to number 10. And at number 10, there is another question. And this is just an icebreaker, as you said, just to have uh, children or students communicate with each other and talk about normal things where uh, so they they learn from each other also words and that's that's a very good one yeah it's also interesting if you just compare so this exercise can be done also in a big blue button in a video conference where they just have questions possible questions they can ask each other uh, and and this may be more inhibiting whereas here they just talk they they feel less threatened in a way i don't know what so it's it's very interesting but it's also something that is nice to observe and see how this is really yes. working and in every vi uh, island language island we have one so in parolet we have one in french with the same questions in uh, in, in in saarburg we have a german one with the same questions and in in um, yeah um, valencia we have also one in spanish so 
that's uh, and it's really fun to do as, as an icebreaker uh, just when you have some time with uh, with when when students have some time left maybe there's some doing an assignment somewhere on another part of the island and some have to wait they can do something like this okay well no, we we um, <clears throat> now we heard so many uh, positive things, positive feedback. Thank you very much. I would be m very much interested in, um, well, not necessarily negative feedback, but your your concerns, you no, know, your reservations, challenges you see, problems you see, because that would be very interesting to maybe talk about. And I don't know, maybe again you can just. Uh, quickly exchange your your impressions with your neighbors, but now with the focus on on challenges, concerns. Think of how to integrate this into your classroom activities. It's not that easy and straightforward. I mean, there isn't a big hole waiting for to be filled with these activities. So just think about things in this in this direction, and then maybe we can. We can talk about this and, and, and also learn for, for us uh, uh, how to, to um, improve these things. Yes. So I told you in the beginning when I started here uh, that uh, we have the Welcome Island. You arrive there or the they, children. They should just talk now. Huh? They, it's over to them. Oh, it's over to them. Yeah. Discussion, <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. You have a break. I have a break. You can go to the pub now. In the meantime. <laughs> or maybe. The microphone is coming your way. I will go to the pub. Yeah, just to ask, last year um, when I uh, worked on this project with my class, um, I think it was at the bottom, once we entered into the Tecola space, password, username, password, it was at the very, very bottom, I think, or it, I think it was it figured uh, somewhere in that, uh, area? Uh, that area. And I was just wondering if uh, the students could have had access. It was one of my, it was something that I, I had caught my attention about f uh, four or five years ago with, during Tilla, and we tried it out in the uh, computer lab a little bit. I think it was maybe less uh, evolved at that point. Maybe there were some technical glitches. I can't remember, but we tried it out. And it had caught my attention. And, uh, and uh, uh, of course, it could be used uh, very creatively, but it's also a great uh, warm up and, to, mm -hmm. and a great way to get the students uh, uh, curious and interested and uh, just having fun to start off with. Yeah. And so uh, in, that, in that page, is it something that the students, once they have their username and their and their password, mm -hmm. they can have access to it? Uh, they have to go there. Now, like, just in the way as Nick showed us, that they have to go to the welcome area, and then they have to go to the island and teleport there. And then they will find this, walk around. So this is in Chatterdale, and it's also in the other islands. So I don't really know whether mm -hmm. I understand the yeah. question. No, no, I'll just have to uh, see where exactly it is on, the, um, on that page and uh, see how we well, can Well, it's have in access. the world. It's just you have to log in, yeah. and then you can go to this island, and then you can walk around and find this I'm not this sure game. which page yes. you mean. Yeah, but, um, well, I have found it for myself. Yeah, it's just yeah, with a yeah. class, I didn't uh, yeah. venture into that. OK. Yeah, so, but, yeah, yeah, you can also ask questions or just discuss things, yeah. I was wondering if I, if I want to put this in my classroom, I would like to do it in a different manner. Perhaps if I start just doing uh, a presentation for the whole class, maybe dividing the group into two, two teams, and then project something that is in their language, in their native language, and then afterwards start working with something in English. But first of all, they can get a sort of a, the environment or the tools, how to use it. Otherwise, it would be difficult sometimes for them. 
And if, if they find this uh, application interesting for working, I think they could carry on working in English too. That's the way I would start. I don't know what they think about it. So you think you would do the, the technical introduction in their mother tongue or? Yes. Yeah, sure. So this is something that is very important that they are introduced to the, to the uh, environment and learn how to use it before being able to use it for language learning. Yes. And that introduction, of course, can be done in their mother tongue. Yeah, so that you could even show it to them in the classroom or with a, with a projector and, and show them and then they could see, aha, uh -huh, these are the possibilities, then they would have to try things out. It's very important that they feel comfortable with it. They could then also wo uh, work together on one computer uh, in teams and explaining things to each other. Yeah, because that is also sometimes some, some people are faster, some students are faster with this and more familiar and they can show the others so they can help each other. In, in one exchange, I think it was even in, in Corinne's exchange there uh, where they used big blue button and that was of course also necessary that they first learned how to use it. It's very easy to use, but still. And there was even one uh, student uh, who volunteered to, uh, to, to um, make a, a video about how to use it. Yeah, so things yeah. like that. So they put things together. They, so students then like to help each other. Yeah. I, I'd like to add to that our island, Arcadia, which is uh, the orientation island where you learn the basic skills. It's in five languages. Mm -hmm. So when you start at the starting point, I will teleport there, and then I can show you. Then it, at the starting point here, you see a, uh, a sign in, uh, oh, it's, it's very dark there. Yeah, yeah, me. You have I make it, uh, change the sun into midday, hapa. Uh, it says now in Spanish, Bienvenido a Arcadia, but I can also change it into uh, uh, French. Then all the, the whole, all the signs will be, all the signs that you will see will be in French, like it says here, Marché, Utilier les touches, touches, flécher de clavier ou contrôleur. Then it explains to me. So if you are, if you have children that are Netherlands, then we have here lopen. Gebruik de pijltoetsen van het toetsenbord of de pijlen op je scherm om naar de volgende informatie te lopen. <laughs> yes, you understand. Yes. So then I do that and I go to the next information. I follow the arrows and then I can. And and this this island has many uh, assignments where which the same with the same look. look here like here that, um, about mouse look about creating pictures zooming in and out, making copies of stuff and so on. So this orientation island can be used as you like in the language of your preferable. So it's, which is, uh, I, which is, was, which was it? French, English, German, Dutch, Catalan, and uh, Spanish, as you can see. And if there is somebody who wants to make a new language for me, like uh, Hungarian or uh, Czechish, please tell, give me, I'll give you a list of all the assignments and then I make, I make also some extra uh, things for that. So, so this, is, this, is, this is the orientation island. They learn basic things that they need to know on the other islands. So how to click on things, how to close, how to everything, but they're in their own language. And, and in fact, two things I wanted to say. One, that it's perhaps not only just for your students to get used to walking and using an avatar, but also for yourselves. Because at the beginning, you go into the world and you are about to fly for the first time, to do all these things. So it is also very good if you feel very confident just before you're telling somebody else to use it. And also that today, physically, we have handouts for you to take um, home with the basic, basic things that the avatar can do in French and in English. Uh, but this is also everything online. So these um, handouts can be downloaded for those of you who are um, seeing us um, at home. And for you, if you need more handouts for your students to take home and to, to watch like the basic things that an avatar does. Yeah, and there's also information on how to install the viewer because you need a viewer to 
uh, work with this world. And, but I mean, this will also be something, as we said, so if someone of you is interested in getting to know this a little bit better and also experiencing the work, virtual world, going into the virtual world, uh, you can maybe, uh, do we have a list? I think we have a list where, where people can just sign in, give their names and, and email address, and then we, we can contact you. And uh, we would then also offer a few uh, opportunities. So I think in a, not next, will it already be next week or the week afterwards, where we have just some online uh, meetings with, could we have online meetings with you and could meet you in the virtual world. Yeah. Yeah, if you are interested, and those at home also, eh? because you have been seeing plenty of things, very interesting, amazing things, okay? And if you want to experience it yourself, you will have the opportunity to join us in several workshop moments we will be organizing in the next weeks. Okay, so it doesn't end up here. We, we start here, right? It was our first meeting, but not our last meeting. Okay, I hope that, uh, okay, yeah. Okay. Um, microphone. Okay. Oh, it's okay. Ce n'est pas une question. Si, si vous me permettez, ce n'est pas une question. Et je crois que ce qui n'a pas été dit, c'est que cet effort est vraiment formidable. Que bon, J'ai été formé comme prof de langue, comme prof de français il y a 30 ans. Et il y a 30 ans, quand on nous a dit que c'était l'approche communicative, on était très contents et on faisait beaucoup de choses avec les documents authentiques. Mais quand je dis « on », je dis le 10% des profs de langue. Alors, après 30 ans que je vois dans les cours, que je vois dans les classes, la même histoire de livres... En fait, j'ai fait une recherche sur ça, sur les livres de textes de français et d'anglais que, que les professeurs suivent comme si c'était euh, la Bible, plus ou moins. Mm -hmm. Alors, euh, voir ça euh, avec la technologie, voir tout l'effort que vous avez fait. Malheureusement, je ne suis plus prof de langue. Maintenant, je suis prof euh, formateur d'instituteurs de, de, de primaire. Mais voir ça, tout l'effort euh, invite à faire des trucs. Par exemple, bon, je pense à, à nous-mêmes, nous sommes six maintenant, et, bon, et l'île mexicaine, euh, il faut qu'on qu travaille. Bon, il faut qu'on qu apporte des trucs, il faut qu'on puisse vraiment produire avec vous. Et je crois que c'est une formidable invitation. Je crois qu'il faudrait que tout le monde réagisse. Nous, notre part, je pense qu'on va retourner chez nous et inviter tous les profs d'anglais et de français pour, pour connaître ça. C'est notre obligation, on est, on est là pour ça. Et bon, je crois que personne n'a dit félicitations. C'est comme il y a 30 ans, c'est un effort qui doit se reproduire, pardon. C'est en plus, je sais, parce que je l'ai vécu il y a 30 ans, c'est beaucoup plus de travail qu'arriver avec les élèves, s'asseoir et commencer à parler. Merci beaucoup. Yeah, um, well, it, it wasn't really a question, and that's, that's what she said. She said it was just a, a comment about the whole uh, session and that it was really uh, interesting for her because uh, uh, she started with the communicative uh, approach 
and at the time it wasn't followed by a lot of stu um, a lot of teachers and it's uh, very important for her to see this new development and uh, the way language learning and teaching is developing at the moment with this um, uh, intercultural telecollaboration and virtual worlds and that uh, she's, um, she was um, a French teacher in, in Mexico and now she teaches um, primary uh, school teachers and uh, she would like to develop that in Mexico with uh, French teachers and English teachers because she's really enthusiastic about Ticola. Thank you very much. Merci. Uh, are you in uh, contact with uh, any kinds of editors in order to promote this uh, further uh, with uh, the textbooks, language textbooks for a class? I know they well. They have uh, they may have DVD material inside of the uh, textbooks, which uh, are sold. Uh, they're whatever each school in France chooses they invest in. Sometimes they keep them for a very long time <laughs> until they're, they're, they're direly uh, outdated. Um, very, uh, teachers more and more do not use them. They, they use them uh, uh, as sources of material amongst many other things. Mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, but I still find uh, that even more recent ones uh, are unfortunately incomplete because they offer things, but they don't offer séquences. Uh, like they, it's nothing. Uh, maybe more composite. Uh, it's uh, theme-related material, but not necessarily uh, sequ sequences. But uh, do you are you in uh, contact? Uh, do you try to promote this uh, in uh, the with the ed with editing uh, uh, with editors? No, not really, because we are, this is just, it's, it's online. It's, about, it's not about a textbook. It's about online activities, telecollaboration, and so we are trying to use any channel that we have to just distribute this, these ideas and, and make them accessible. And, mm -hmm. and yeah. Editors uh, actually uh, more and more uh, send students online. They give links uh, in the uh, textbooks uh, mm. related to the themes and they and that's not excluded to send the students online to an existing link uh, and to say okay uh, you go there and you will find this and it might it'll be a YouTube video or something like that so but it's more it's this is more directed uh, at teachers so teachers need to know about this and use this with their class so it's not a ready-made uh, material for students, but it's for teachers to use. So there is, there are tasks. There is, there are tasks that that are available, but still teachers have to use them. And in their class, they have to accompany the students. They have to moderate things. They have to to uh, engage students in this. And as as Kurt said before, it's this flipped classroom idea. Yeah, that you really prepare them in class. Then they do something. Then they come back. It's nothing that they do alone or that teachers just can send them to or that teachers can use a link for their students to something. But teachers have really to integrate it into their classes. But I see what you mean. But it, I think it's slightly different. Yeah, it's not just a resource that students can, that teachers can use and send their to, uh, uh, students to, but... Yeah, but yes. as, we, as, we said, as we said earlier, if I may uh, uh, chip in, uh, as we said earlier, <clears throat> it's more like <clears throat> providing opportunities for certain kind of learning and communication activities. And uh, I think um, we, we could see it in particular in connection with individualized learning. And uh, in the classroom, say you work with a certain uh, textbook, and your students with the entire class you have to do and you want to do certain things and then you notice some of your students they have certain problems maybe with regard to communicating and you want to provide scaffolding sort of support to guiding them towards um, a better 
uh, communicative abilities, and then you could use such an environment, and it would be up to you to create this content bridge so if that it fits in with your curriculum in uh, in class, so that you uh, and that is where you can create content uh, for uh, for these boards so that it fits. It's it's more like complementary uh, to what you do in the classroom. I think this is where where the strength is. And and once I mean this is a question which also came up. Um, that, uh, in it, but that it is time consuming, it's additional work. Of course it is time consuming and additional work, but in particular, the first times you do this, yeah, like, like everywhere in life, the first time we do these things, it's unfamiliar and it requires more work, more time. But just imagine, you like like Corinne, her experience. Now the second time she does these things, she knows a lot more than before, and she has certain Always. materials for these environments and for her activities in these environments ready. So next time and the third time, it will be indeed easier for her to do these things and uh, yeah, open up new possibilities and uh, uh, at a low cost. So I think it. This has to be seen also in balance. I mean, uh, we always encounter this as first-time experiences, also for students, first-time experiences, but we have to think of uh, what it means pedagogically um, after uh, uh, teachers and students uh, got more familiar with this, technologically and, most importantly, pedagogically. I'm supposing that uh, further workshops will focus on how student, um, teachers can be creative with this. Yes. Uh, because it, uh, uh, being creative is, is a great thing. It's, um, uh, so that's an added uh, plus into uh, what uh, can be also basic material. Uh, it can also be pre-fabricated, pre pre-established, if it's, if it's uh, very, very uh, common, uh, everyday types of themes. If it's a, a very, very particular kind of theme, sure, we could create and, and add and tweak, and, but uh, if it's something also uh, uh, quite uh, ordinary and uh, based on daily life, it can also be prefabricated and then it can be tweaked if possible. Um, yeah, but is, this is what, what we have, like these, these tasks that we have prepared, the, the, the learning stations and learning paths that we've shown, they are there. There's, this is material that is available, also with, um, with worksheets for students and, and everything. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is available. Okay. But then with the additional possibility to yeah, just change that's, things. That's great. That's so great. that's the idea. Mm -hmm. To take it from there, yeah. Um, another question which came up in the online uh, contributions concerned um, uh, the question for whom this is uh, open, who can participate, um, can um, teachers with their students from outside the EU, for instance, participate? And the answer would be, in principle, yes, yes. I mean, this is an EU project, but uh, and we have EU or partners from EU countries involved in the project, but, uh, um, but it's in principle open. I mean, for instance, Petra and I, we are in contact with the Goethe Institute in uh, Singapore, and they might be, uh, hope they will be interested in um, uh, using this uh, or exploring this, uh, these possibilities with uh, some of their students. It's a great potential. Or if you have uh, Spanish uh, uh, as a target language, well, of course, there are countries which are outside the European Union where uh, Spanish is spoken. Or if you happen to have Portuguese, um, or, or English in other countries, if you want to expose your students in English with uh, a student, say, from India. I mean, all this is a bit um, dreaming, but it, it, in the end, it depends on you. Yeah. 
And the partners, the partner teachers, you have available, you want to work with. And then it would be necessary to get in touch with us and, uh, and we could provide you with uh, access to this environment, for this environment, as has been said before, you need an account, your students need an account, and this needs to be created by Nick, and, um, and, uh, uh, or at least approved by Nick, and then um, we can talk about uh, these possibilities. Okay. So maybe, maybe just one thing, maybe uh, Nick just so shows one other example, one other possibility um, before we have uh, the final discussion, yeah? Yes, yes. Okay, we are now on the Asterix Islands, as you have maybe already seen. Uh, and, uh, and so what, I, our, what we were thinking of, uh, with this is a quite new thing. You see here a comic, and I use this one uh, from Asterix, and the, uh, the, the balloons, the text balloons are empty. And so you can have uh, your students fill them with a text. But how do you do that? That's quite simple. I just click on one of the uh, things, and that, then it says here, type your message in the chat bar and press enter. So I can have this little boy say, hello. Hello, do you know? And then it's the first sentence. And then I can make a se second sentence, and I say, do you know? Uh, Kurt Kohn, question mark, like this. So now, and then we can go to the next one, and Christy already has a, a, a typed on it, clicked on it, so she can now type uh, an answer, which uh, Obelix will, will uh, uh, show up. Who doesn't know Kurt Kohn? <laughs> Yes, and now you see the problem we have here that it doesn't fit totally on the uh, on the on the on, in the balloon. So actually, Christy should type "Who doesn't know?" and then after that, in the next sentence, "Could come." But anyway, so he can say the other the, the other boy can then say again, "Well, he is a professor." Profess, uh, you see, he doesn't know. And then I, I can still add something. If I want to change it, of course, I can say clear. And I click, well, he is. And then click on again. He loves Tai Chi. Uh, he loves Tai Chi. Uh, uh, professor <laughs> who? He loves Tai Chi. That's more important than being professor. Loves. And he loves to dance with his wife. Tai Tai Chi? I don't know how to spell Tai Chi. <laughs> Love Tai Chi. Well, let's, so that is, and here it comes. Here's the problem. It's just comics, eh? Okay. So, and then the little boy can have a, a final answer. So when, when the students create this, then Afterwards, when they're ready, they can maybe si quite simply make a screen capture of this to, s to give to the teacher and say, okay, we found something and we created this uh, final. So, and, and that's also possible here. Uh, snapshot, and then I want to save it to disk, save as. And then I can save this as a snapshot to my disk and then send it to the teacher. If, now, if I want, oh, sorry. Oh. But, if, if so, but now I want to clear this. So how do I clear this? Quite simple. On the back, I turn around. Where is it? On the back of this, I walk around and walk to the back. Ow, I bumped my head. On the back is a red button. And if I click on the red button, then, uh, let's go back. Oh. Oh. Yeah, so maybe in the meantime, I can explain a few things. The question here is again, so how can students, how do they use it? Do they just only write the text? No, again, there is a lot of communication taking place because they have to decide, okay, what would we want to write? And then they help each other. 
oh no, there is a mistake. Oh, what is that word? I'm, I'm missing a word. So, so things like that. And it's again about interaction, communication. Yeah, so this yeah. is very, very important. So they are, will be working in teams uh, on this. And then there could also be a competition, like who did the best story? Yeah, mm -hmm. so this kind of thing. So afterwards that they compare what they have done. I wasn't finished yet. No, I know. I just, uh, okay, I, but you, were, you were just walking yes, around. I, I just I was thought clicking, I filled, I oh, filled no, the I was, time. I was <laughs> clicking on the red button, and the red button said to me, you are not a teacher. You cannot clear. Oh. You cannot reset the comic boards. But Christy, as you can see, Christy has over her head, she has the teacher sign. So she now goes around. She will write, uh, click on the, on the red button, and then she will clear everything. So you, this is something that you can have... Uh, but you, uh, you can, I, of course, I can make it so that everybody can clear the, the, the sentences. But you can also have that only the teacher can do that. So the, 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 the conversation still stays there. I'm not a teacher, but Christy is, so she can. That was, this is just something that we, I created uh, a few weeks ago and was just testing this. And, but I just wanted to show to you, I've, maybe we cannot use these comics because they are copyrighted. No, we cannot use but them. But we no. will have another comic uh, pe a person write and maybe making some nice drawings and we have some great comics for uh, students to fill or pupils. That's what I wanted to show as the last thing because it's almost time for the round it table. It is, it is, not only almost, it, it is. It is, yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. So we give the microphone to Christy again? No? Okay. All information, of course, about this and uh, other nice things you can do is on tecola.eu on our website, and you, here you can find all documentation, projects, se about seminar, about the streaming. Later on, we will have this, uh, vid uh, this streaming will be available also as recordings, so you can have a look back at the videos of today.